Hello everyone. Um, this is a video on ratio tables. We've been working on this a bit in class, some pretty basic ones, but we're getting to some more difficult ones, so I just wanted to give you some examples of what we're working on. The kids should have taken notes on this on the beginning, on the left side of the page of chapter 11, which we are halfway through at this point. Um, they should have actually a definition and a list of what each of these three things are with an example. Uh, I encourage them to write the example in the colors like I had in class, but, um, you know, they may not have. But here we go. The f this first way to solve a ratio table is called the, or I've been calling it the, the additive method. So I've been encouraging them to look for patterns. So here in this table, um, this is a ratio table. We are looking at each ratio like this. Is this is just representing the ratio one to three, or we could say one, two, three, or we can say um, one to three as a fraction. Same, it's all the same thing. So, um, and what we can see is we are the additive is pretty much if we have a table that's in order, like we can see this one's going in order right here, one, two, three, then there's usually a pattern. So I notice that we're adding one, we are adding one, so I can guess, hey, we're just gonna add another one right here, so this is gonna be four. And I notice on this side, we are adding by threes, right? Plus three, plus three, so I can finish this table by adding three, so 12. That would be the additive way. Okay, moving to the next one, this is the multiplicative way. Now the reason that we would move on to this second way to solve a ratio table is because we notice that, hey, check this out, these are not going in order. So um, if I needed to fill something else out, I can't just say, hey, I'm adding, you know, I'm adding uh, six here. Well, we don't even know what this is anyway it's not giving us any sort of a pattern. So we need to figure out a different way to solve it. What I do notice is that it seems like this second number is just the first number times 2. 2 times 2 is 4. So I should be able to figure out this rest of the table by multiplying. 8 times 2 is 16. 20 times 2 is 40. 40 times 2 is 80. And hey, I have this nice filled out table now using the multiplicative method. This is helpful when, again, the numbers aren't in order like this. This is also helpful if we hop back over here once. Let's say I had a table that was in order, but the problem wanted me to solve for, instead of, you know, four, let's say it was, it gave me this table, that wanted, but then it wanted me to solve for a number like 12. Well, I don't want to have to figure out uh, what t what's going over here by making every single number between, you know, going 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, all the way to 12. Um, but I could even solve this one using the multiplicative method because I'm noticing that these are all times 3, right? So I could just do 12 times 3, 36. So that's helpful if we have w even a table that's in order, but we have to skip a bunch of numbers. Um, the last method is by finding the rates. Now this one's slightly different and more complex, but the reason is because not only do we not have anything going in order right here, but if I'm looking across at the ratios, there really isn't anything I can multiply 10 by to get 12. I mean there is, but it's a decimal and we don't really want to have to deal with that So at this point. So um, it's not as if we have 10 to 20, so we can just multiply times 2 across. So what we do is we find the ratio rate. So I'm looking at, I'm going to look for the lowest ratio because it's, we have to reduce it to find the rate. So that will make my life easier. I notice that this is the easiest. So 10 over 12, and that's going to be 5 over 6. So this is the ratio rate, this 5 over 6 here, the most simplified form. And I can use this to, there's a 
variety of ways. If I'm trying to solve now for this space out here, okay, I could just say, hey, you know, it's 30, and what goes down here? Well, you know, 5, and I can use it kind of multiply 5 times 6 is 30, so 6 times 6. Okay, but I don't want to do that. Um, well, I, I guess I could, but I'm going to use a tape diagram just so we're consistent in class. So we have uh, 5 to 6, so we have 5 to 6, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then we've got 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and I'm looking at this number right here. This number is the smaller of the two. It should be represented by the 5, right? The, the 30 would match up with the 10, which I simplified to that 5. So this is 30. Okay, well, I've got 30, and that's divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 spaces. So that means each of these needs to be 6 in here, which means that each of these is 6. So if I was trying to solve for the total of all of this, this just ends up being 6 for each, you know, that's 6, and times the 6, 6 times 6, 36, okay, and that would be the answer that goes in the box, 36. So obviously that's a lot more work, and I'm giving an extra tape diagram example. Um, you know, you could just hop up here and do a up here and kind of do a cross, not cross multiplying, um, just a similar like fractions type of thing, but um, this is the method you would really want to use by identifying the ratio rate if you have numbers that are um, not only easy to multiply to get the second number, but they're also not going in order. Hope that helps.